Hey everyone, and welcome to the launch day of Shadowlands. This is my guide to week one of the expansion, and in a few ways a day one as well. Really, this is just a bunch of handy tips, things to do, a few recommendations from us after our time on the beta. Some of this stuff is a bit more for the min-maxers, but there's other stuff that is just very handy for you to know. And speaking of handy, if you hit up the link below for today's sponsor, Displate, you can get up to 41% off. And Displate, plates are awesome. I mean, there's some Ghibli. Uh, we just decorated our YouTube office uh, with disc plates in preparation for our Shadowlands LAN, which will be very fun. The product is just ace quality. The discount down below is absolutely thick. And with that said, let's go. In some past expansions, you could rush to max level, and then you could do a bunch of weekly lockout-based activities just before the reset, and like the weekly reset. That could get you an upper hand, and you can't do this in Shadowlands. It's not a thing, not really. Blizzard have announced that Mythic Zero Dungeons, Renown Earning Activities, and then also Torghast, uh, that those things are going to be closed until the first weekly reset occurs. That, of course, is the usual Tuesday one for the US and the Wednesday one for the EU. And what this actually means is there's really no major advantage to hitting max level just before the reset, right? I mean, sure, you'll get more time to play the game, but those weekly lockout-based things, you'll get no advantage, so you don't need to rush. Speaking of leveling, in week one, really leveling the characters that you want is the core thing, and if that's what you would rather do, then you don't really have to worry about doing a lot of other things. As you'll see in this video, the amount of things that you have to get done in order to be optimal are really quite low for week one of Shadowlands, certainly as compared to BFA anyway. Now, I would recommend also, by the way, when you're leveling, doing the side quests and stuff like that, um, or you could at least do those after, uh, specifically for the reps you're interested in. We'll cover reps a little bit more in this video. It's nowhere near the situation in BFA where you wanted to get exalted with reps for, you know, crafting stuff, and we'll touch more on the reps when we do callings, but that is another thing. Maybe when you're leveling or after you're leveling, do those side quests for those reps, at least for the ones that you want. And then also expect our Threads of Fate leveling guide a bit later on in the week. I basically just want to get a final live run in before we do that. Okay, PvP gear. This is something I really think you should be thinking about in week one of this expansion, because it's really quite useful in the lower leagues of Shadowlands leveling. Um, so yes, be sure to get your fast, uh, you know, your, your first win of the day daily honor for the skirmishes, epic, and regular battlegrounds. Because if you do that consistently in week one and week two, you will be able to basically be guaranteed to get, well, an item level 171 bit of gear of your choice in week week one, and uh, actually better in week, uh, you know, in week two. And that's really good because that can actually help fill in any gaps left by Mythic Zero Dungeons. And once week two rolls around, you can upgrade that PvP gear to rank five, which I believe is around Mythic Dungeon level. So really, I'd totally recommend doing some PvP because that gear early on is really quite handy for filling out your set. Getting to Renown level 4 is your largest goal for week 1 of Shadowlands. You will move from Renown level 1 to 2 by joining your Covenant, and then you will move from 2 until 4 by just doing the two weeklies. And here's the good news, that's really not going to take you that long to do. You absolutely should do it, but it won't take that long. And there's really not much else to say here. I mean, this is the most mandatory thing to do, and it really is quite easy in terms of the time commitment. So, nice one, Blizz. Callings. So callings are the emissaries of this expansion. They basically just ask you to do three world quests in a zone, and you probably should do them, especially if, of course, you want to get your reputation up, because the callings do give rep. So yes, these will contain some world quest scale rewards, as well as grey items that actually do vendor for quite a chunk of gold. I got, got uh, 1.7k from doing a calling on the beta, as well as a bunch of anima, which is quite handy to get. Now, doing these, and of course doing world quests, that will help you get reputation with the factions of this expansion, and for some people that will be important. So at honored, around honored, 
Dishonored, you start to get crafting, um, you know, crafting recipes, which is quite early on as compared to BFA, which is a very, very nice thing. But also, they do sell a few general legendary powers. You may want those. Most min-maxers will not be using the general ones. They'll be using spec-specific ones. Um, and then, of course, yes, the crafting recipes. So do hit up those vendors and actually see what you want. And once you've done that, be sure to do the callings for that rep because, yeah, it's worth the rep. Okay, Covenant Sanctum Upgrade. So, this mostly does just impact your cosmetics and your world content. This is mostly ignorable if you are going to be really quite bleeding edge in your rating stuff, but there is just one thing to be aware of here. So there are grateful offerings that are a currency that come from doing the Anima Conductor co uh, content each week, or each day really. Now, each time you fire up the Conductor, you get one out of 10 um, in your progression towards permanently reinforcing an area with it. And the way that works is once four areas have been permanently reinforced, you will be able to buy from the vendor for your Covenant, the Quartermaster, a random legendary power that you have not yet learned. And that will cost some Anima plus 35 grateful offerings, which of course, the grateful offerings you get from doing the Anima Conductor related content. So this is something to be aware of. It can help to fill out your selection of legendary. So if you're interested in that, yes, do the Anima Conductor each day. The best gear that you'll be able to get before Season 1 is regular Mythic Dungeons. These drop item level 184 gear, which really is quite good. Now, beyond that gear, you will also want conduits. And of course, those conduits can drop as bonus loot from the dungeons. And when I say bonus loot, I mean there, they do not take the place of a regular loot drop. Now, what's interesting here is that Shadowlands launches with 8 dungeons. That is two less than BFA launched with, actually. And the numbers here are rather interesting because uh, while Shadowlands 8 dungeons have 32 bosses, that's actually down from the 42 bosses provided by BFA's launch dungeons. So there's not as much to do here, actually. It shouldn't take you that long to do one of each. So yeah, here's the, I guess, hoping the Blizzard have got robust post-launch dungeon plans there. Eight seems a little bit in the sort of small side. Now, of course, this Mythic Dungeon gear will be very well supplemented by upgraded PvP stuff. Uh, that's the unranked PvP gear that you can get via Honor, as I covered already in this video. Let's talk about the Maw. So, Venari sells you permanent upgrades to your gameplay in both the Maw and Torghast, and that is all in return for Stygia, but you will need to increase your reputation with her to get most of the good stuff. Now, you do this by, of course, completing content inside the Maw, and Blizzard recently made the Maw basically a more guided experience than it used to be, and this is via the inclusion of daily quests, which are your, um, basically, the first activity that you should be doing in the Maw. So, look at your map, look at the daily Dailies, do all the dailies. After those are done, just gallivant about the place doing events, killing rares when you see them, they'll be on your mini-map. You uh, basically aren't going to be able to be here forever because of the Eye of the Jailer mechanic, which eventually will just kill you. And that does mean that progress in the mod very much depends on how well you actually play. If you die and you waste a lot of time, number one, you'll lose Stygia, which kind of defeats the point, so do play quite carefully, but you'll just progress more slowly, right? The Eye of the Jailer will boot you out and you won't get as far. Now, as far as the actual power rewards go here, basically, the mod can be ignorable outside of the weekly quest if you do not want to grind out uh, sockets by just getting all the Stygia you can. If you do want sockets and you are min-maxing, then yes, you will actually want to progress within the Maw quite a bit because the more Stygia you get, well, the more sockets you can get for your gear. So if you want that, then you'll need to get your Venari reputation up. So at the very least, that involves doing all of those um, daily quests pretty much every day. That's just gonna be a thing you're doing. Legendaries are deeply tied to professions. Of course, the professions make the base items for the legendaries. Now, crafting these base items will require skill rank 100 with your uh, crafting uh, trade skill. Now, getting to rank 100 will be very, very, very expensive, but uh, the expenses, of course, do not end there because crafting the base legendary items is also extremely expensive, even for rank 1. And then if you want to learn rank 2 of your legendary base item, you'll need to make the rank 1 one 15 times. Yes. This is all extremely expensive. So the main tip that I've got here is just get together with your guild and try to solve the problem of legendaries. The markets will likely be near extortionate on launch. So 
yes, I mean, yeah, get your, you know, your soul ash from Torghast and all of that stuff, but think about the professions and of course be sure to obviously do the rune carver quest line early on so that you can start earning your legendary powers. Next to the Soul Ash part of Legendaries, it's really quite simple, right? So go do your quest, unlock Torghast, you'll get that at endgame, you'll be sent there by your Covenant. Um, it's simple enough, right? The most you can do is layer three of each wing, so just do that, and that's basically paced so that in week two, you will be able to craft a rank one Legendary. So that's essentially all that you really need to do. Going deeper and deeper into Torghast, that is something that will take place basically post season one, because season one needs to come out, for Torghast Layer 6, and then eventually beyond to be unlocked. So, that's basically that. Yeah, it won't take you that long to get all of your Soul Ash worked out, basically. Next, a simple one. Do your command table. Basically, right, as you level up your followers, and you won't know this at the start, but as you level them up, you will gain access to missions that award um, anima, small amounts of soul ash, uh, which is really quite nice. It's about 100 soul ash, which isn't that much, but over a few weeks it does add up, and uh, some other, like, nice goodies. Now, players who want to just raid log, okay, you'll still need to collect your weekly anima, so, yeah, having some of that stuff come, uh, you know, via a decently leveled up set of characters in the command table, yeah, it will be just a useful source of pretty easy to get resources that you'll be able to acquire using your phone app, which uh, will save you some time. And yes, it will give you a very slight edge on uh, on your soul ash. And really, that is it for, uh, for the main things to cover here. In terms of what you really need to do, right, you absolutely want to get your renown, okay? So get your renown in week one. Do your Torghast in week one. And that's basically it. You can do the callings if you care about those reps and you want the rewards from the callings, which is basically just some anima, some gold, maybe a little bit of gear, um, and of course reputation. Um, you know, and past that, I mean, do your Mythic Zeros, right? You can do, each one is on a weekly lockout, so do your full set of uh, Mythic Zeros. You can do your PvP if you want to supplement that gear, but that's, that's really it. Now, don't take that from me saying that there's not that much content to do in Shadowlands. There overall is. It's, some of it's decently spread out because of, you know, waiting for the season and the Renown unlocks and stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, don't take it as that. This is more the Blizzard have made it such that you don't have as much mandatory content to do. I would actually prefer to run out of things to do in World of Warcraft than to feel like I just have to you know, deal with having to get exalted Heart of Azeroth people, what were they called, Champions of Azeroth, which was kind of annoying at the start of BFA. So, that's basically the situation, that's what you gotta know about week one. With that said, by the time you watch this, it'll be a few hours till it comes out, so, uh, yeah, good luck getting ready, have fun, that's it for me, and with that said, I'll see you next time. <laughs>